Hello, consumers of the content of this video. I am going to get my traps ready for trapping season. I've got Duke one and three quarters, Bridger one and three quarters, Bridger number eleven long springs, Duke four fifties, um, Duke one and a half. I've got a Victor number one, and we're getting these ready. But and then. I've got a dog and a couple cage traps. But, first trap that I'm gonna do something to, I've already done stuff to those ones, not everything, but you can see that pan is not level. It's very low. And I think pretty much all of the number 11s straight out of the box were low panned like this whenever they were set right, so I'm gonna show how to fix it. <clears throat> all right. Got our thing. Gonna bend the springs back away from the trap. You want, if it's a low pan, like you wanna do, it's actually kinda hard, cause this, just the way this trap is made. Okay, after much Piddling around, I got it good. I told y'all wrong. If it's if the pan is too low, you want to take away from take it, move the dog post away from the trap because it has too much. You you need to take dog away because there's too much. So I got these number 11s, hoping they were gonna be like the best traps I've ever had. Um. I don't really like them. I hate fooling with them, piddling around with them, but I'm still going to use them, obviously. Maybe maybe they'll change my mind, but that's how you set the pan, even though I didn't really show it. Alright, here is a Bridger 1 and 3 quarters. Um, the pan tension is good, the pan height is good. Let me set it here. Pan, ten or pan height, pan tension is good, I tested that. But you can see that uh, spring holder there, the coil holder is bent. This one got, eh, it actually, it got the wolf fang, I had a wolf fang cable on here, and it got ripped off by a combine, and I guess it touched the spring eye right there too. So, I'm gonna see if I can bend that out, but... I really like these Bridger 1 and 3 quarters. They are terrible groundhog traps. I had so many misses with this, with these two Bridger 1 and 3 quarters this year on groundhogs. But they work perfect for tri canine trapping and coons and whatever. Except they're not strong at all. Straight from the factory, you have to put a second set of springs on them. So, let's see if I can do this without breaking it. I mean, obviously, it don't take much, but there we go. That's good. I mean, it's a really good trap straight from the factory. It comes with the uh, night latched. It's got a good pan on it. Although, you can see right there. Alright. Out here working on traps again. I got, I think this is all the traps I have now. I got dog proofs in there too. So, what I need to do is put four coil springs on this one. Got a bag of four coil springs. You can see they're different. So, we're good. See if I can do this the right way. Line it up. Let's we'll see. Look just like that. It's easier to put the this part on first, and then just snap that up on the lever. There. Now it's. A trap that will work. Put 
a make and put wolf fangs on these Duke 450s. <clears throat> Alright, making a wolf fang. Got wire. I have bad luck with this thin wire and wolf fangs. They break off. So they sometimes break off when I'm pulling them out of the ground, so I'm gonna make these extra long. Um, like that, that's pretty long wolf fang. So, get a ferrule, run it through. This is a wolf fang that I had that I have used last year. Um, you can see it's kind of rusty, but it's kind of not. I soaked it in vinegar to get all the rust off. Uh, that just brings it back to life, makes it almost like new. There's that. And then I just take it right here to the vise and I hammer it down. Just hammered down. And the next end is real simple. That's all it is. You can sort of see it up there. There we go. There is a wolf fang. Alright, I'm putting this wolf fang onto this uh, Duke 450 chain. So, y'all couldn't see that. Just put the J hook in there. Goes in like that. And then how I crimp it on, or close the J hook, easiest way I've found. Hopefully, y'all can see. Just there, easy, perfect. I need to maybe put um, wolf fangs on these broke off one and three quarters, and we'll see. Go from there. Like I said, that's a long wolf fang. Duke 450, baby. Made in China. Another way to clean wolf fangs is a wire brush on a Dremel. And it's not going to focus. There we go. And wear eye pro because the last thing you want is one of these bristles flying off into your eyeball. Focus? Good? And there you go. Pretty much nice and clean. Alright, one thing that I'm doing is I'm checking all of my wolf fangs to see if they work. If I hit a rock last season and banged it too hard, it might get out of form out of shape like that one. So you can see. It's hard with one hand. It fits, but it's probably going to get lodged in there, and then I'll end up pulling the driver up, and that wolf thing is going to come stuck with it. Alright, got a bunch of traps laid out here. Got the Bridger 1 and 3 quarters. Got tags on them, wolf fangs. Got tags on the dog proofs. One's got a chain, one I'm going to use a stake for. I only have three Duke 1 and a halfs. That one is... Uh, 
a little smushed. If you watch my groundhog videos, you'd know. And then one of them got stolen uh, this year, and one of them, a raccoon, I think a raccoon or something broke my stake and ran off with the Duke one and a half. So, um, got one Duke one and three quarters with a tag, wolf fang. Got a, another one right there. Um, might put a wolf fang on that. Maybe I might not use it. I think I've got enough traps. Got all of the 450s. Most well, there's one right there that I might not use. But wolf fangs, and then I already have a place where I know where this one's gonna go. So yeah, getting the traps ready. Gotta put tags on the 450s and check all the elements, make sure they've got tags on them. All right. Well, I just filmed making my dog proof coon bait but the camera wasn't on so it didn't do too much good but I put in about half a bag of candy corn because that's all we had from last Halloween I put in one bag of these things 259 a bunch of things I put in one bag but I'm gonna put in a second bag because nobody in my house eats them they taste terrible. Uh, cat food. I did pretty much half of half of this jug of cat food. Put candy corn in, and then there's white chocolate caps in. Mix them up. Be careful not to spill any, so that my dog doesn't eat them. You can see there's not a lot of candy corn in there, but there's a good mix of everything else in there. So that's how I make macoon bait. All right, and there is my dog-proof coon bait for the year. I only have two dog proof, so this is plenty enough for the whole season. But I also put it in cage traps because that's when I started putting this kind of bait in cage traps. The coon started following it into the trap, so I started catching more animals in the cage traps. So that's how I do that. That's pretty. Good. Alright everybody, I'm having a little bit of fun in the garage. Uh, I just finished up pressure washing all my traps. Got 22 there, I think. And then two cage traps out there. But what I'm doing right now, I'm working on my flashing beam from last year. Uh, got some marks right here. I'm going to cut them with the bandsaw, just try to trim it up a little. It's not it's not the right the right way and I'm also um, this is the F&T uh, trapping catalog I these I like to use catalogs like this as information because like I'm trying to make stretchers for squirrels so the weasel stretchers it says you can use them for red squirrels so I, do, I want bigger than this so I come up here to the mink ones and they're those are the sizes for the mink boards so I just take the measurements for that whatever I want I came up with I want three and a half inches wide for my squirrel boards so then I'm gonna figure out the length cut them out shouldn't be too hard but I like doing that I like making things that so that I, so that I don't have to buy them because it's I don't know it's fun making them so I'll see what I can come up with and maybe show y'all something else. Alright, I did get my dog proofs painted. Uh, just painted them white. Spray paint. They'll, the paint will probably come off after I catch two coons, but that's fine. Okay, and I also got the my one of my squirrel stretchers done. I'm going to take one of my squirrel pelts out of the freezer and process it, see if this is the right size board. Then I also made um, a flushing board for the squirrels and other small animals that I may catch. I don't know what that would be, but you can see it's a little wonky right there, but the flushing side is good. It's nice and smooth. Everything's good. Just made that out of a piece of wood from a skid, and this, I think I said it was made out of an old muskrat stretcher. So even got the little hanger right there too so all right got all my 
um, traps that I'm going to be using for fox and coyote trapping. Got them hung up here in the forest just as a little scent control deal. Um, I've never taken too much time to limit my scent at sets, but I'm going to do that a little bit more this year. See if it makes a difference. Um, so that's all for this video. Next video I'm going to do bait and lure. I'm going to make some and show what I'm going to be using for the year. So, yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you appreciate it. No, I hope you liked it. I appreciate it. What do you ponder when you look in the face of a chicken? <laughs>